keep talking about some of this and some of that. We sort of all of a sudden threw a log at you, um, talking about <clears throat> the, a log function, okay? But then, of course, the graph of a log. Now, sometimes just for whatever reason, when a teacher even says log, kids are kind of like, what? Okay, a log is just a type of function. What do you mean a type of function? Well, look, it's a function that instead of going slowly at first and then growing quickly, you know, like you're pretty comfortable with exponential growth, slow, then quick. It's basically quick, then slow. It's the inverse. Okay, so it's, it's a different type of function. Here's the thing. Lots of things that are living and growing can be modeled with logarithms. Lots of things in nature can be modeled with logarithms. I always like to tell kids, because it's true, you are a logarithm. The way you grow is a logarithm. You gr people grow based on a logarithm. Remember when you like got measured, you know, how tall is Johnny now? Okay, and then the doctor showed like the growth chart. Okay, if they didn't do this, you always fit into some logarithmic growth chart. And the growth chart was always like this, basically at some point. Now you say, what? You know, it, you have to like take parts of the graph. Okay, maybe like, you know, right here is when, you know, you're a baby and then, you know, you go through a certain type of growth in your first many years as, as a youngin. Okay. And then eventually you do reach a certain height. Okay. There's not an asymptote right here, but eventually you do reach a certain height. You're not going to grow anymore. And so growth charts are logarithmic. Okay. Lots of things in nature are logarithmic. So let's do something else with a log. Sounds like a good thing to do. Okay. Like let's graph another log. Okay. Now this tends to be something where, you know, when we all of a sudden start doing this, people throw kind of all logic out the window. I want to try to help you see that every log graph is going to have similarities to the one that we did over here. It's going to be the inverse. But we don't need like the inverse concept. We don't need the inverse concept to be able to end up with the graph of a log. It's a little harder just because it's usually less familiar. Even for me, I'm kind of looking at it a little bit and having to think, okay, wait, what, what can we do here? Um, remember I appealed to this shifting idea? It seems like the, that looks similar in that problem. There's something on the inside. Whenever you have a change on the inside, it's always a shift. Okay? It's always a horizontal shift. But it's like the opposite direction. So this is a pretty key idea. We have a shift of three units to the right. Again, it's a subtraction sign, so there's three units to the right. But maybe you say, what shifted three units to the right? Okay, well, there's usually two good answers to that. The intercept and the asymptote. Okay, now the intercept, the intercept started at one. Okay, and it's kind of like the same one that we normally have in front of a function. So the intercepts start at one, but you have to notice that that's the x-intercept. Shifted to the right three, so of course now we're at four. But the asymptote also shifted. And even though this is a little less common for kids, a little less familiar, there is a vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote starts at zero. So when it shifts to the right three, it's at three. Just those two things alone can be pretty helpful here with trying to draw a graph. Okay, As long as you kind of remember the graph of a logarithm is that shape. You know, like the way you grow. I kind of feel like there should be a little more, like a little more like that you can be sure that this is right. Um, and there is. We, we could find an x-intercept sort of the old-fashioned way. We could find an x-intercept by plugging into the equation. 
Now, I will share with you that on the test, there's a lot of things that I could pick from, but I'm trying to pick from the stuff that we're talking about together and the stuff that you guys are doing in your assignments. At some point on a test, I'm going to have you do this without a calculator. I'm just going to say, hey, find the x-intercept without a calculator. So, you know, be able to navigate this and understand that I'm actually trying to get you to solve a log equation. You say, how do I do this? Okay, let's, we're kind of picking up things. I don't want to say random things. We're picking up things from other algebra years and trigonometry. And listen, you got to get, get this log out of here. I mean, you got to like undo the log. And the way that you undo a log is actually not by logging it, but by basing it. And so we use something called exponentiation. But don't let that word blow you away. I'm just doing a base to both sides. And a base, 7, is going to cancel with a log 7. And it gives you something that I think we can all understand, 7 to the 0. Anything to the 0 is 1. That's kind of that 1 I was telling you that we started at. Okay, I started at 1. You're good. I started at 1, but shifted 3. All right, so there's a little more of a sort of a concrete, familiar way to find that, that uh, x-intercept. Now, I want you to become a student of your calculator. I want you to know how to use it. And so I'm saying that we could graph this log on the calculator. It might be something that when sort of push comes to shove that you, you know, end up doing in your assignment. And I'm kind of giving like the green light here and saying you can do that. Now, when you type in the log of x minus 3, depending on your brand and model of calculator, it, you may feel a little bit like, well, what about the 7? Okay, and this gives us a chance to remember Something else about a log. The one, the button on your calculator is called the common log. When I hit LOG on my calculator, it's the common log. It's base 10. It's base 10. If you divide, you will change it to the base you desire. So I can divide by the log of 7. It's called the change of base formula. So log of x minus 3 divided by log of 7. And I want you to see what this looks like on the calculator. Play along. I hope you're playing along. Um, it's not, it has a little bit to be desired. It's like not really the right graph. Okay, the reason it's got a little bit to be desired is because the calculator is having trouble connecting to the last point. Because the last point is somewhere near this asymptote. And so the calculator kind of just stops connecting the dots. But the truth is the graph keeps going down. So if you're going to use your calculator, don't do something silly like this and draw that on your assignment. You need to show that you have knowledge that the graph continues approaching the asymptote. But the calculator is not going to show you that. Again, it's having trouble plugging in the last point near that asymptote. I hope you're not like shy to ask if there's something that I did or said or showed and you're, you kind of got lost on it. Just ask. I thought of one more thing. There's always one more thing. But for this problem, the book is going to like you to respond to the domain. And again, if you have the graph, if you understand the asymptote, then you understand the domain. You should understand that the graph is to the right of this asymptote. So that's all. Just say so. The domain is greater than 4. Make sure you don't say it equals 4. So 4 to infinity. And that is not right. Boom. <laughs> that's not right. It's not 4. It's... Three. Sorry about that. If, did you get to the point that you were wait, saying, wait a minute, 
So I'm sorry, three is the asymptote. The graph is to the right of three. All right, now this section, I like the book. I'll just be, it's a great book. I mean, obviously you can tell it's also well used. It's been used for many, many years. It's a good book though. This section, for some reason, the authors sort of mix up and put a bunch of stuff in. I understand how it's related, but sometimes students are kind of like, now what? But there is a little bit more in this section that kind of interrelates to all this. And to help you see that, we're going to, and I think we're going to do this twice, but we're going to solve a problem graphically and algebraically. Okay, solving graphically and algebraically. So again, it's kind of like, oh, okay, now we're going to do this. Yeah, you'll see though how it kind of connects with some of the other ideas. Also kind of gives me a chance to show you how in your assignment, if you use your calculator, how you kind of show that. Okay. So in your assignment, if you use your calculator, and when I when I say that I mean like you graph something. Okay, so let's say you're going to solve this graphically. Now, maybe this kind of sounds new, maybe it's something that you'll say, oh, I've heard that before. But do you realize that? Any equation, this is a good equation, any equation that has something on the left and something on the right, it can be thought of as a graph. You know, it's really like saying that the graph of the left is supposed to equal the graph of the right. It's actually a quite simple idea. It's just trying to say that the two sides are equal. In other words, when does that happen? Okay, well, when does that happen? Go find it, you know, graph it. So we're graphing the left side and the right side. You're allowed to do this. Okay, now, by the way, the graph on the left, you shouldn't be super surprised that it's exponential growth. It's exponential growth. I'm sure that your eyes kind of go to the main place. Do you realize though that that place is when the two graphs are equal? And so we want to find that X value, that X value. Okay, now your calculator is pretty powerful. We can do a little bit better than just tracing. If you push the trace button, you get the little blinking spider. And you can kind of see that it's close to one point something. Okay, it's close to x equals one point something. In the calc menu, in the calc menu, second trace. Okay, you kind of have like a whole array of things your calculator can do. And, you know, sometimes it's nice when things make sense. We're trying to find the intersection, and that's what choice five will be. Now, the way that this works is that you have to put the cursor close to the action. And so it says first curve, question mark. What that's really saying is, like, where do you want to be on the first curve? So I want to be close to the purple dot. It's already there, so I'm going to hit enter. Now we're on the second curve. Well, I want to be close to the purple dot, so I hit enter and then make a guess. Basically, you hit enter three times. You hit enter three times, it does a little boop, 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 and it comes out to be that X value. Now, what I just did there. It took me 6.1 seconds to draw that sketch and label the intersection point. That's how you would show your work on an assignment. Okay, you basically draw a quick sketch and draw our attention to the point of contact there.
Okay, now, I know what you're thinking, especially if you're the calculator kid. Uh, yeah, calculator kid is excited because you solved the problem with calculator. But seriously, I want you all to be the calculator kid and know that. Also, I want you to be the algebra student. Okay, we want to be able to solve this algebraically. And sometimes we prefer the algebra method because that's more what we're taught, that we're comfortable with. And I hope, because you've kind of seen this now a couple times, that you're not real surprised by what happens here. We're solving for x. We're doing some basic algebra. We're adding 2 and dividing by 3. Okay, I'm just, I am sort of doing that, skipping a few steps, but basically you get 2 to the x equals 3. So what do you do? What do you do when x is in the exponent? How do you solve when x is in the exponent? You have to slap it with a, a lock. You slap it with a lock. You do the log of both sides. The exponent comes tumbling down. And all the king's horses and all the king's men said that x is going to equal the log divided by the log. It always comes out that way. X comes tumbling down. You divide then by the log. If you're the type of student that kind of says, you know, I know that's going to happen. Can I just pop that in my calculator? As long as you know which way to do it. In other words, that it's the log of 3. It looks like for this problem, the log of 3 divided by the log of 2. Oh, you get the same number. You get that 158 number. Okay, so using logarithms, I hope you get the idea that that's like a skill that you want to be able to use. How are we doing? We have one more problem. It's kind of like this where we're going to sort of do it both ways. It's a little more fun though. Two to the x plus two to the negative x equals five. I'm going to switch things up instead of doing it graphically first. If you're doing that, I don't care if you keep going or not, but. We're going to do this one algebraically and then graphically. So, 2 to the x plus 2 to the negative x. Oh, I got it. I got it. It's Mr. Naylor's bad joke about the exponents. You add them. You add the exponents. Right? Right? That would be kind of weird. You add the exponents and you don't have the exponent anymore. You don't have x anymore. Okay, not add them. You don't add the exponents there. It's an addition problem. Okay, only if it's a multiplication problem can you use those properties. Ah, shoot. Okay. <clears throat> Any other thoughts? It is kind of a special problem. Sometimes a math problem is created uh, so that we can solve it using like a special technique. You might not solve a chemistry problem this way. You might not even have integers in chemistry. But the math theory is to prepare you to be a thinker when you go upstairs and use, use it in science. The theory is that the equation can equal zero. Now, Actually, a lot of equations can equal zero, but sometimes when an equation is equal to zero, we're able to use blank. We'll get to the blank, but we're able to use blank. Let me show you one more thing. 
it's kind of one of those things that I would not expect a student to say, hey, why don't you multiply that equation by 2 to the x? I would not expect you just to pull that out of the blue. But let me show you what happens if you multiply the equation by 2 to the x. Oh, now what can you do? Now what can you do with the exponents? Now you're multiplying so you can add them. You can add them. So now I get 2 to the 2x. Okay. Oh, now I'm multiplying. So what can I do to the exponents? And again, you can add them. And one more time, oh, well, I don't really have something here with this 5. Don't be silly, though, and tell me this equals 10. Okay, it just equals 5 times 2 to the x. Now, we're almost there. You say, where? Well, I don't want to say, but we're almost at a point where you look at this equation and you realize, oh, it's that kind of equation. You just need to do, like, one more rearrangement, okay? A little bit of some rearranging. First off, 2 to the 2x. Nothing wrong with it, but by rules of exponents, it's the same as that. And just, just let that sink in a second, because all I did was decided to make this be a power to a power. Now, you should be the kind of student that's saying, so why'd you do that? Okay. Before we answer that, I just want you to realize that it's still equal, because x excuse me, a power of x and a power of 2 is still equal to a power of 2x because what can you do with the power power? You can multiply them. You can multiply them. Okay, we will answer why we did that in just a second, so stay tuned. Um, hey, 2 to the 0, okay? Well, that is equal to 1. It's equal to 1 yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So 2 to the 0 is equal to 1. And I'm going to switch places here. I'm going to put this guy, I'm going to put it right here. And again, you're going to see why in just a second. Okay, so I switch places. I put the 1 at the end. And we're almost there. We're almost at like the blank. Basically, like what kind of equation is this? Look at it again. It's an equation. It's an equation that's equal to 0. And it's in a certain form. It's kind of in a little disguise, but it's in a form. Okay, we would call it a quadratic. We would call it a quadratic. You say, what? 2 to the x squared is kind of like saying a squared. 5 times 2 to the x is kind of like saying 5a or negative 5a. plus the 1, equaling 0, and we have ourselves, again, a quadratic. Now, a quadratic equation is an equation where you have like a squared, and then you have like a linear, and then you have like a constant. Please be careful not to say, I would never have figured this out. That might be true. I'm serious, that might be true. I'd rather, though, that you say, okay, let's keep working through this. We have a quadratic, you know, what's next? Um, how can we finish solving for x? We're pretty close. Okay, we just have to realize that this equation right here is able to be solved using the quadratic formula. Okay, who would have thought that all of a sudden that was going to pop up? But it does. So we're going to solve this using the quadratic formula. Okay, that's the old opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. As I always tell kids, you want to be able to teach your children the quadratic formula. Make sure that when they ask that you're able to say, yeah, we did that in school. You can't say, I never did that. So the quadratic formula, you want to be able to teach that to your children. It's the opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, it's not necessarily pretty. I'm not making, uh, you know, this doesn't come out to equal 5. 
or some, it actually comes out uh, to be five plus or minus root 21 over two. If this was algebra class, you could keep the answer like that. I'm going to choose to take this one more step and come up with like the decimals so that we can kind of see these numbers. So we end up with 479 and 021. 479, 021. Blaney. So why do you put those both um, minus 483? Why do you put 21 there? So uh, this was, I, I'd be, I'll i confess, I put the letter A up on the board, and when I wrote it, I kind of was like, uh, okay, because that letter A is not this 4A. 4 times A is referring to the coefficient on the first term. So that 1 is A, is the coefficient. 4AC, C. C is 1. C is referring to the constant. The reason I didn't like that I wrote the letter A is because I wondered if it would get confused with this A. But it's the coefficients, Delaney that get plugged into that quadratic formula. Now, you say, are we done? Hold on. A equals 479. A equals 0, 2, 1. At least be at the point that you realize we're trying to solve for x. So wait a minute, what happened to x? Well, it's more like what happened to 2 to the x. Did you hear that? 2 to the x equals a. 2 to the x equals a. So 2 to the x equals 479. 2 to the x equals 0, 021. Again, 2 to the x equals a. Okay, so we kind of have this like, sort of this extra step to be able to actually solve for x. Of course, that extra step is just a logarithm. Just a logarithm of those decimals. There is actually a problem in your assignment like this, okay? I don't say that that you get worried, but you recognize it, and you'll be able to model it very similar to this one. And I hope that you'll try it. Uh, in fact, you know, that you'll not just try it, but you'll really take your time and work it out. And again, for this problem, uh, to finish it, we have to divide... We have to use logarithms and then divide. Okay, so we get our actual x values here. Now I'll share with you that these answers are actually supposed to be exactly opposites. But there's been so, so much rounding that they get off by a hundredth. But they're actually supposed to be opposites. You'd be fine if you wrote that, wrote this down. But when you look at the graph, oh yeah, there was this graphing method that I kind of like said not to do first. Okay, but when you look at the graph, you end up with kind of a confirmation of what we did. Okay, and both those intersection points are at 225 and negative 225. Sorry about that. Jeez, I didn't realize uh, I didn't realize we were up to the bell.